you know, before I get into the meat of this video, there's a few things that I need to say up front that will, of course, serve as the intro to this masterpiece. And, of course, you have seen the title. Now, this weekend's Rabbit Hole production is going to deal with the Kevin Samuels versus Reverend Creflo Dollar, the unedited, unscripted version. I'm going to cover it here in this politically correct rant and give y'all an overview but you know once we get it down the hole we coming down the straight center of the plate I'm also going to weigh in on this this alpha who was being evicted with the by your children come to find out that that was a scam I'm going to address that in the hole as well so you know what it is second nature like breathing you want these two classics send me an email I'll almost certainly get you the link Earlier in the week, I believe it was Monday or Tuesday, I received an email from Brother Obsidian. And the email had a, a link to a sermon preached by one Creflo Dollar. And in the, in the email, he, he tells me that, you know, Kevin Samuels asked me to forward this to you. And before I could even click on the link to go look and see the sermon preached, he sends me another email and he says, well, you know, Kevin asked that before you go in on this, wait until Friday because he's going to do a video on Friday and he's going to get a piece of Creflo Dollar himself. So I agreed. Okay, I'll wait. I'll wait till Friday. I'll do my videos anyway on Saturday. So, yeah, that was cool. I'll wait. But when I went to go look at the video, and I'm listening to the Negro preach this end time prophecy. And then towards the end of the video, he, he makes a reference to one Kevin Samuels. And so what I've done is I took that entire sermon and I put it back under the microscope. And upon further review, I've come to realize that Creflo Dollar preached that entire sermon about Kevin Samuels. We're going to deal with that later on in the video. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to address that politically correct, but we're going to go down the center of the plate in the hole. You know, this second year. Send me an email. I'll give you link. But let me say this first, and we're going to lay the foundation with this before I even get into that Creflo Dollar foolishness. And it's kind of odd to me when I heard Creflo Dollar, the things that he was saying. Because then I thought to myself, and I've asked the question over and over again, I've done videos on it. Who is it in the black community that mistreats black women more than black preachers? Who? I've asked hoteps, black first, pro-blacks. I've asked these Negroes who do nothing but cheer, lead black women who can find no fault in black women. I've asked them, man, listen, who is it that exploits, financially pimps, sexually and psychologically abuses black women more than black pastors in the black community who is it who 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 would you say is a close second because clearly the black pastor is first and he, he's he, there's nobody close there's no one closer there's nobody's close there's nobody's cl close to the biggest manipulator deceiver pimp Thief, 
sexual abuser, psychological abuser of black women in the black community. Nobody comes close to that black preacher. But yet and still, when all these Negroes find themselves trying to defend black women, they will go to black men on social on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And they will complain about these guys as if these guys are the worst thing that has have ever happened to black women. But yet and still. You have this black pastor in the irony. The utter irony irony in the fact that the biggest manipulator, deceiver, pimp of black women, the irony is he's supported by black women. Now you, you, you got to sit back and think about that. You, you have to sit back and think about that. I, I look at Cynthia G with her three trash bags, but never does she ever reference a, a pastor as being a dusty. Never do they even reference this dude. This pastor has gone through entire families. He's dealt with the grandmother, the mother, the daughter. Now he's looking at the granddaughter. And some of these deviants have become so depraved in their, their sexual appetite that women just don't turn them on anymore. So now the pastor is looking at her sons. In the case of Bishop Eddie Long. But then you would think that the woman, the black woman would have a problem with that. But no, because after Eddie Long set up those cases with those boys that he was molesting, black women went out and held a service and, and crowned the guy a king. Is bamboozling. So when I listen to that sermon that that that, that um, Creflo Dollar, I guess y'all call it preaching, and I, I put it back under the microscope, and something dawned on me, and I asked the question, you know, see this 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 black pastor, you you have to understand. The bully pulpit that he has. And if you know, the, the bully pulpit, the term deals with a person who has ample opportunity to espouse their opinion, their views, push propaganda about a variety of topics. And we know that the black pastor has the biggest bully pulpit in the black community because this nigga can stand up 52 Sundays out of a year. And spew forth his shmeel. He has Bible study. He has Sunday school. And if that fool decides to run a revival all week, all week. He has the entire week. To stand up and push his propaganda. Now we know in a perfect world he's supposed to be preaching the gospel. But you know come on stop. That, that's that bully pulpit. That that black pastor was handed. And what he does is he pushes propaganda to the black females who are members of his church. And whatever that propaganda is. They in turn take that propaganda and internalize. And then what do they do? Because they're the first nurturers. Right. So they in turn turn around and they indoctrinate the children. So in fact. He's indoctrinated the entire community. But this is understood, though. Ain't that what Margaret Zanger said? I mean, that beautiful, lovely white woman who understood the Negro. Margaret Zanger, who was a eugenist. And when she created that Negro project. Dealing with birth control and, and, and mandatory sterilization, amongst other things. Margaret Zanger said, listen, I, I cannot come to the black people and preach this. They're not going to listen to me as no white woman. It's not going to happen. They're going to run me out of their community. They're going to call me a racist. If I come preaching mandatory sterilization and, 
and birth control. They're going to say I'm trying to exterminate the Negro race, which is what they accused her of. So Margaret Sanger said, listen, the well, only way we can really get this into the minds of Negroes, we got to go through that black preacher. We got to find us a black pastor, a well-spoken, articulate, handsome black preacher, preferably one who's been trained in the arts and sciences. If we indoctrinate that Negro, he's in turn is going to stand up in his pulpit and indoctrinate Negroes. Margaret Zinger understood this. You Negroes don't seem to get this. The black pastor is the one that pushes the propaganda in the black community, whatever that propaganda is. This is the reason why when they wanted to push the vaccine for COVID, what did they do? They went to who? The black pastor. Come in, nigga. And you had sinners set up in black churches injecting dumb Negroes with, well, <laughs> let me stop. Let me take, let me take a sip. This. Yeah, I said, I don't want to, I don't want to give my view on the vaccine in this video because I know they act funny with that. So let me scratch that from the record. But they set up centers in the black churches where they injected black people with this vaccine. It's nothing new. Why? Because they understood if you want to sell this vaccine to black folks. Yeah, they had entertainers cooning and buffooning. But the centers were to set up in the black community, in the black churches by that black pastor. It's an age old. It's the same play. It's been ran for years. Y'all's March on Washington. If you study the March on Washington or if you study or read any of the Honorable El Haj Malik El Shabazz Malcolm X's take on the March on Washington, you'll know. Listen, this was the people who said we're going to Washington. We're going to Washington and we're going to tie it up. We're going to shut it down. When Kennedy got wind that those Negroes are descending on Washington like the seven-year seven locust, he called in who Brother Malcolm said the big six. All of those civil rights leaders, all of those black preachers, just like Trump, when he met with all those black preachers, Kennedy called in all those black preachers of which Martin Luther King was one of them. And he asked those Negroes, man, what's up with y'all talking about marching on Washington, man? What, 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 what's up with that? And those buck dancing, bow jangling, step and fetch it black preachers said, hey man, we ain't talking about marching on Washington, boss. We will never do nothing to hurt you. Massa, that's the people talking about that. We don't have no control over that. And Kennedy told him, well, y'all do now. And he placed those Negroes strategically at the head of that, which at one point was a revolutionary action by the masses of black people. He placed them Negroes as the head of that march. And then Martin Luther King gave one of the what, speech that will go down in history. Will go down in history as one of the great speeches in our, in our lifetime. I have a dream, blah, 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 blah. They use this Negro. They, they take him to push propaganda. That, that's his job. That is, it, it, it is as old as the slave plantation. When the indigenous, when the Africans came over as slaves, they tried to practice their indigenous religions. They weren't allowed to. That's why they created hush houses. Hush houses were places where the slaves would gather to try to practice their indigenous religion. Master didn't want them practicing their indigenous religion. And when he allowed them to become Christians, there still had to be a white person sit am uh, sitting amongst those Negroes. They weren't allowed to meet unless there were a white person listening. To keep tabs on what they're saying, what they're thinking, who's the radicals, so they can report that back to the slave master. When that white person got tired of sitting amongst those Negroes, they tried to find somebody who was a dutiful, loyal snitch that they knew they could trust 
and depend upon to tell him the truth. And Brother Malcolm said they looked out and found that black preacher. And they gave him a top hat and a cane and they propped that Negro up as a Negro leader. He became the historical snitch. He's been a snitch on the slave plantation and he's been a snitch ever since. He is the original Judas, Brutus, Benedict Arnold, sellout, Uncle Tom, is that black preacher. And if you don't understand the role that these Negroes play in the destabilization of the black community with the propaganda that they spread, then you don't you don't need to be making videos about black folks or black condition. Because if you can't if you can't chronologically include this preacher and understand that this is the guy. This is the guy, man, when they wanted to try to sell those welfare policies to black women. They, they, they went to the black pastor, preach this. That's why I call them the axis of evil. The Democratic Party. The black pastor. And the black woman. And the black woman and the black pastor, as I told y'all, are Tweedledum and Tweedledee. And again, we've covered this. Y'all know I'm a fan of them. You know, and I'm going to get the curfew dollar in a minute. Y'all know I got to lay the foundation, man. You know how I do. When Alice went down that hole, went through the looking glass, bumped into Humpty Dumpty, that cat that smiled and disappeared, nothing remained but his smile, and she bumped into these two, these twins. You, you couldn't tell them apart. The only, only way that you knew one from the other is one had a hat that says Tweedledum and the other had a hat that said Tweedledee. That's the only way that she could tell them apart. And that's why Tweedledum and Tweedledee has become synonymous with things that are so closely related. You can't tell them apart. They're connected at the hip. And that's the black pastor and the black woman. And that's why Hotep pro-black back to Africa's don't address the black pastor in all of his thievery, all of his scuddoggery. The reason why they don't mention him is to, to mention him is to mention her. Why? Because they're connected at the hip. I believe they probably use the same brain. What little bit of it is there. It's, that's Tweedledum and Tweedledee. They dare not address that black preacher because they know to address that black preacher, you're going to have to address that black woman. These are just facts. This is, this is the bully pulpit that the pastor has. That's the reason why if you're going to come against that institution, man, listen. Dude, you, you are in for a headache. I'm telling you, I'm, you're, you're in for a headache trying to deal with that. The, the indoctrination is so deep, man. It's so ingrained. It's so ingrained, man, that you, you can't even begin because you don't have the time. You, you don't have the time, the little bit of time that you have to try to reprogram these Negroes. This preacher is preaching to them 52 Sundays out of a year. He's talking that Shmuel during Bible study. He's talking that Shmuel during Sunday school. Every chance he's get, he's pushing his propaganda, his views. You don't have you don't have enough time in the day to try to combat what this Negro is saying. That's the power of that bully pulpit. And that's a great segue that takes me right into Creflo Dollar. I know y'all was waiting on it. I told y'all I'd get to it. Y'all got to let me lay the foundation and give y'all some perfunctory, man. Now, this Negro, he, he stands up. And I'm going I'm to give the overview, politically correct overview. I'm going to really get to it in the whole. But he, he preaches a sermon dealing with end time prophecy. 
He reads all these passages of scripture and he goes through this entire schmeal. Trying to prove to the congregation that we're living in the last days and we're we're approaching the time when Jesus is going to return. This is this is this is this is what he's preaching. And in that sermon, what he's talking about, you know, we're approaching the time when Jesus is going to return. The passage of scripture that he read. And he, he's, he's preaching, he's going on, he's going on. He's talking about how things are getting worse. And then I'm, I'm, as I'm listening to him, as he does what y'all call preaching, and I'm reading the comments in the comment thread, and these people are all preach pastor. Oh, this is a great sermon. And it's just amazing to me just how dumb, not, not just black folk, but white folk. It just, it's just amazing to me how dumb Christians are. Because that entire sermon that he preached, trying to validate the fact that because society has got is, is such a worse condition that is in, this is evident that we're approaching close to the time where Jesus is going to return. And I would offer the Creflo Dollar, well, dude, what, what would you say about Paul's epistle to the Thessalonians? Where he wrote that epistle to that church because they thought Jesus was going to return in their day, in their day, and they were just standing around waiting. So the apostle, the great apostle Paul, according to y'all's Bible, he wrote one of his epistles to the church in Thessalonica to tell them, "Listen, y'all just can't stand around and wait on Jesus. There's things that y'all need to be doing in the meantime." So if the church that back then thought he's going to return in their lifetime, then how do you explain today, brother pastor? I mean, how do you make a connection of the two? See, Kremlo Dollar, he knows y'all dumb. He knows y'all don't study. He knows y'all don't read. So what he basically wanted to do is he basically wanted to address Kevin Samuels in this sermon. Basically what he said, I didn't know Kevin Samuels in time prophecy. But apparently he is. Because at the end of that schmeal, at the end of that sermon that he preached, he, he mentions his wife showing him about this dude who does nothing but sit on, on television and insult women. And then he went so far as to say, that, you know, if you want to marry a millionaire. So when he when he starts talking that we know who he's talking about. We know who he's talking about. But then when when you take when you go back and look at his entire sermon, you realize that entire sermon. He was talking about Kevin Samuels. And what he did is see you, 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 you have to know this preacher. I'm going to deal with this more in the whole. What he said is my wife. Showed me this guy on television who bashes, and I'm paraphrasing, who bashes black women. First of all, we got to unpack that. We got to unpack that now because we, we got to go through the looking glass. Everything is backwards. No, it wasn't his wife. First of all, why would his wife be watching Kevin Samuels? Number one, it wasn't his wife. So that's number one. Number two, he said he was on television. Creflo, you know he's not on TV. And she didn't show you him on TV. She should, may have, whoever it was that showed you, and I know who it was that showed you, showed you on YouTube. But see, he said television because he wants to give off the illusion that I'm not really paying attention to this. I'm bigger than this. So I, I don't know. It was television, the radio. He's, he says that as, a, as what y'all would call a sneak diss. Yeah, my wife showed me this guy on television who does nothing but bash women. And if you want to marry you a millionaire, you can marry you a millionaire. So he, he, he's talking about Kevin Samuels. He says his wife showed him, but it's not his wife. It was those women in his congregation. Because the women in his congregation got Kevin Samuels on their tongue, on their lips. And because they're talking about him, 
when they go meet with brother pastor and they have their little so-called counseling session, that's who that woman is complaining about. So he doesn't even get a chance to ask her, well, baby, what color panties you wearing today? Wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. We, we, we can't say that here, man. <laughs> Let me, this is a politically correct version, y'all. And the whole we'll deal with we'll deal with it differently. He he can't ask the woman. You know, how you're doing today, what, you know, what's going on. No, he can't ask her anything. Why? Because the only thing that's on that woman's mind and on her lips is Kevin Samuels. She's complaining about him. So the next woman comes in and she's complaining about Kevin Samuels. So now he, he they, they, all these women are complaining about Kevin Samuels. And he's thinking, who is this nigga? Because he doesn't like the fact that the women ain't talking about him. They talking about Kevin Samuels. They got, they got Kevin Samuels on the brain. This upsets the black pastor. So he thinks, I got to go look at this guy. So he goes and he looks at it. So that's why I know he know that he wasn't on television. He on YouTube. You looked at him. Dollar, you know where he's at. And Crafto Dollar said, you know what? I'm going to address this nigga from my bully pulpit because that's what they do. That's what they do. And he pushed the propaganda from his bully pulpit. That entire sermon was about Kevin Samuels. Now, he mentions him at the end of the sermon. But once you go back and listen to what he's saying throughout that entire, it was, a, it was an hour-long sermon. And you listen to everything that he's saying, and then at the end of the sermon, he talks about his wife, what is his wife, it was the women in his church, in that mega church of his, that's complaining about Kevin Samuels. Because remember, he's in Atlanta too. So those women down there, they're, they're hot, man. They're, they're, they're disturbed by this. And they're down there, they're running their mouths to their pastor. And this Negro, he has to confront him. So he uses his bully pulpit to try to combat his message and to try to paint him as a part of end time prophecy. Don't they, it, 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 it's just a, all this shows is that we we close in the time when Jesus is gonna return. This this is amazing, man. Now I knew that he was gonna be confronted. I knew that. I've done a video on it. But I thought he was gonna be confronted by some of you savages. You know, on YouTube, y'all going to see him out somewhere and y'all going to roll up on him and try to confront him and have it recorded and make a video out of it. I, and that still may happen. But I didn't include in my analysis that the black pastor would get wind of it because all these women who's complaining about this dude are complaining to who? Their pastor. And now the, pa the black pastor has to address this. He has to address him, and he's going to address him using the most powerful indoctrination, indoctrination tool in the black community, that black pulpit. And that's the reason why that dude preached the hour-long sermon about Kevin Samuels. Now, that, that's, that's the politically correct way of everything. I gave you an overview, but you know, I, I, I bit my tongue in a lot of areas, and y'all know this. Because y'all know that once I undress this down in the hole, we, we would deal it with it from a completely different perspective, particularly the women. The women in that church. The women and Creflo Dollar's church. The women he exploits, he, he pimps. The women that when he wanted that new jet, and remember now, he, his church, World Changers, is in Atlanta, and, and he, he had just opened a church in New York, and he wanted to hold services in Atlanta and be able to get on his jet and fly to New York and hold another service so he can collect some more money. In order for him to do that, he needed a new jet, a reliable jet. That's the reason why he wanted to get that new jet, and they, they would pay for it. They'd have bought it. Those women would have reached into their pockets and they would bought their pastor that jet. 
This is how much he pimps them. This is again, this is the reason why I look at the whole tech, the pro black. When these niggas make their videos complaining about the stuff I say about black women, I just laugh. I just laugh. You look really dumb. You really do. You look stupid. You look stupid making a YouTube video about me and the things I say about black women. But now you got cref the Creflo dollars of the world with all of the money that he swindles out of your mothers, your grandmothers, your sisters, your wives, your girlfriends, your fiancés. And y'all remain silent in this church mouth. Y'all don't have nothing to say about that. Nothing. And why don't y'all have anything to say? It's because he used that bully pulpit to indoctrinate the women of his congregation. And once he indoctrinates the women of the congregation, y'all better not open your mouths and say one word about him. Because that indoctrination is just that strong. That's the power of that bully pulpit. And when all these women started complaining and continue to complain about Kevin Samuels, Creflo Dollar decided to use his bully pulpit to address him. And that's the reason why he claims his wife told him about this dude on TV. That in and of itself tells us that he's lying outside of the fact that his mouth is moving. But I'm going to deal with all that in the whole. I'm going to address that sermon completely unedited, unscripted in the whole and I'm going to deal with that scam that's been taking place on y'all's YouTube. You know what it is, second day, you like breathing, you want those videos, send me an email, I'll get you the link. Because at the end of the day, 